Coming up on Push to Talk. Jan's out today, so I take over as host while I discuss some of the more STEAM-related stories with the group. Bill and Laren join me, and uh, we have a great show for you, so stay tuned. to talk. It is uh, Sunday, June 30th. Uh, my name is Joe Stasio. I'm filling in for our regular host, Jan. Uh, I'm here with Bill and Laren. Hello, Bill and Laren. Hello, Hello Joe. Hey, so I, I know that I don't have to ask this of both of you, but please bear with me as I uh, step outside my comfort zone of being the, hmm, uh, yeah, person to the, uh, I guess, more active member of the podcast. I appreciate your support during this trying time. Uh, I'm going to start with Laren because Bill, I have a, I have a better idea what you're up to. Laren, what has your uh, week been like? How are you? What are you playing? Uh, what's going on? Well, you know, I'm just taking care of my plants <laughs> as usual. Your I'm plants, one of those plant okay. weirdos. Yeah. Uh, I also played my friend Pedro this past week or so, and that was really fun, actually. That's the new Devolver Digital, uh, yeah, like uh, gun dancing. What would you call it? Um, yeah, sort of like a platformer shoot 'em up ballet of sorts. Okay. But nice. uh yeah, How definitely you... very mechanically heavy, but it's it's really fun. It's really fun. Okay, so you like it. Yeah. I did like it, yes. Cool. Uh any playing anything else of note? Oh, not really. No. Yeah, I hear you. I'm interested in when this plant life took off because obviously I have followed Laren on social media for a long time and now all of a sudden I just see plants like weekly, daily like plant stuff. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm intrigued more than games. Like, I don't even, we don't even need to talk about games for the next hour. We can just talk about plants. Like what's, when, what's going on with plants? Have you always liked plants? Oh uh, yeah. I just haven't, I never really posted pictures of them until, you know, a few months ago uh, when some of them started to take form and change a little bit during the springtime uh, because that's when everything starts to grow and look different. Hmm. Um, so that I was like, well, I might as well just start posting pictures of some of the growth and see how it goes. And now I'm elbows deep in like plant mom life. Huh. I haven't seen these pictures. What are are they like indoor? Is you have like a garden outside? What are we talking about? It's it's mostly indoor plants. Um, I actually don't have really a, a yard or anything. So uh, it's mostly just potted plants. I have some succulents out on the porch. And yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like a trial and error of my, my journey with plants because some of them I'm very new to. And I'm still learning a little bit about. And so... It's just like me documenting that whole plant journey of mine wow. on Instagram, mostly. My big takeaway here is that Joe doesn't follow Aaron on social media. <laughs> She's J- Joe doesn't use social media much. Well, that's true, but it sounds it sounds more damning when it, you listen to the way that I put it. You know? Yes, yes, absolutely. That's why I had to clarify. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> it's um, okay. Not many people follow me anyway, so. Oh please, I do. I do. Handful of plant people do. <laughs> I'm I'm not a plant person, but I'm intrigued by hobbies um yeah I, hobbies are I cool. enjoy see, yeah like i enjoy seeing like as someone who's kind of like taken and i guess it's kind of aligned a little bit as someone who's taken like an active interest in my backyard like how yards work and i'm like watching youtube videos on growing grass properly and you know like my Brushing lawnmower them. started smoking and stuff and like so i'm obsessed with like the home ownership that takes place outside so when i see plants i'm like oh that's probably like I'm going to head that way soon. Like, I'm going to have to be like, why is this stupid tree that I bought not growing or whatever? So <laughs> I'm a uh, full on plant dad. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I have time for that. My wife, she'll take care of the plants more than I will. Um, she just yells at me to cut the grass. So <laughs> I'll admit Which you did that, today, right? Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Uh, in the, the, the cul-de-sac, um, I was actually fascinated because when I noticed that, you know, today was the day the temperature dropped and that's kind of how you plan things around here. You don't really go outside when it's, you know, 30 degrees Celsius before humidity. Um, You know, and with humidity, it can be like 40 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is. Man, I I don't know what 30 degrees Celsius means at all. Hot. It's hot? It's hot. Okay. It's probably like at 40. I mean, I would be surprised if you're not at 90 or 100 Fahrenheit at that point. Um, But it's a lot of it's humidity, which is what kills you, right? It's not the heat. Sure. So... Yeah, we got a break in that today. So I walk outside and it's like I was telling Laren that it's kind of like the opening scene of a movie where you look at like an overview of a neighborhood and like everyone is mowing their lawn at exactly the same time in unison. 
and it's that's basically what happened today. Like I go outside and everyone's mowing their lawn because it's the only day that they can do it. It's like the Truman Show. Um, yeah, basically. Uh, so yeah, me and everyone else in the cul-de-sac, we mowed our lawn and gave our head nods to each other, you know, like <laughs> acknowledgement that we were all wise to mow our lawn at this time of day on this day. <laughs> and I've realized that this stuff makes me incredibly boring and I couldn't be happier. I love it's, it. No, no, I, I'll tell you, listen, I think that kind of feeling is perfectly normal. I'm learning that I feel that way a little bit. And uh, I think that probably means statistically that someone listening also feels that way. And Lar- Laren deserves a yard. We should do like, yeah. a, like a GoFundMe <laughs> so that Laren can have a yard. Because if she's, if you picked the, the, like the saddest hobby, nah. no, we got to get you some place to plant, uh, like I additionally. I agree. I got the urban jungle thing going on. Let us set up a GoFundMe. <clears throat> I mean, I bet you I, we no get guarantees donations. I'll use it on plants outside. <laughs> Probably would still buy plants. But. Okay. I mean, I don't think that that would be like a, uh, like a, like a grift if you use it on plants, indoor or outdoor. So. Okay. Except well, then I guess I'll uh, take it. Cool. Bill. Yes. What have you been playing? Ah, uh, not destiny Two, Like at all. No, not true. On purpose. Uh, or? Yeah, so I got to save most of my Destiny talk for uh, when Jan comes back next week, of course, because he's got thoughts, um, but he'll forget them all. So I'll, I'll be brief with my Destiny. Um, last week, and in Destiny weeks are Tuesday to Tuesday. So we're coming to the end. So previous week, not the week we're in right now, which will end on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Previous week, they had an event called Iron Banner, which is like a more of a slightly more competitive PvP mode. Um, and you can have three characters in Destiny, and in order to unlock the armor set for that event, you need to play a lot on each character, probably in the neighborhood of like 10 hours per character. Um, I went through the quest to unlock the armor on all three, so I, in a week, put in more than 30 hours of Destiny PvP. Yikes. Probably closer to 35 to 40. So this week, the game makes me want to puke. Because I've just like overdone it. Like it's, I've overkilled it. I can't stand the idea of booting up Destiny right now, which will, it'll fade, of course. Like I'm not angry at the game or anything. It's just I've played way too much. Um, so I logged in to like go visit a vendor or something because, you know, that took 10 seconds. I didn't play anything. I just went in, saw the vendor who, sure. before they left and bounced out. But other than that, um, I have been playing Super Mario Maker 2. Um, cool. Which is one of the only, like, other than some Breath of the Wild, I don't play a ton of Switch. Um, but I'm loving it. I have a very hard time with the Switch controls. Uh, so I'm not good at the game. I'm not going to build any courses, but I'm going through story mode. I'm enjoying it. It's chill. It's, you know, on the couch. I can play it for 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever and then put it down. Um, went through a couple created courses, but nothing too hard because I'm bad. Um, and then in the evenings, I'm playing a game called The Hunter Call of the Wild, which is probably the most gorgeous game I've ever played in my life. Wow, that says a including, lot. Including, it's it's nuts. Um, I've put some screenshots up on social media and whatnot, um, and maybe I'll I'll share one for the uh, the post or whatever for this this podcast. But it is breathtaking. Like even if you didn't want to actually go hunting in the game, you could just walk around. And you'd have a good time. Um, so over the course of the last week, I've put more than 30 hours into that. Jeez, I I haven't even heard of this. What is it? Uh, it's been out for like two years. It's uh, basically it's a hunting game. It's a hunting simulator. I'm not a hunter in real life. Not that I'm against it or for it or anything. I'm just not. And in this game, you it's it's very close or I guess as close as a video game has been in a while of, of kind of like simulating what hunting experience is like. Um, so that appeals to some people, obviously, who are hunters, and for others it doesn't. Um, I do enjoy hunting mechanics in video games, like Red Dead, The Long Dark, things like that. Um, so I wanted to give this a shot. It can be multiplayer, so you can walk around these worlds with your buddies. Um, it can be single player, where you can do it on your own. And it essentially released with the base game, and then it's adding DLC that costs anywhere from like 5 bucks to like 10 bucks per DLC. Some of them are new maps, some of them are like, you know, new weapons or new animals or whatever. Um, And I went all in, man, bought all the DLC, everything. Um, And just every night, like right now, I don't want to be talking to either of you. I just want to go play that right now. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So it's better than the long dark, huh? Uh, No, different. Um, But it's hunting mechanics are infinitely better than the long dark. But Mm. the, if if I said that to Raf, who is the creator of the long dark, he would remind me quickly that um, the long dark is not trying to be a hunting simulator. So it's not really a shot to say it's the hunting mechanics are better. I mean, the long dark's not trying to do that. Yeah. Um, but the hunting mechanics are very, very good. Um, if you're not into hunting, it won't matter. 
what's the uh, what's the gameplay loop like get in you get into the world and does the like session end once you've got your got your animal head i don't know no. anything about hunting no not at all um <laughs> Just grab so them you, by the head. You essentially get into that. You get into the world, and it's very um, different. Animals are in different parts of the world, and some animals are only exist on certain maps. Um, you need to use the right collars to get animals to come by. Uh, it takes obviously your scent into effect with wind direction. Um, certain animals only appear in certain places at certain times of day, like they might come to a you know a stream to feed or not. And it's um, I've tracked an animal for over like two and a half kilometers. So like. It, it took me more than an hour. You can hunt an animal for one animal for more than an hour. Um, and you get basically kind of chastised by the game or rewarded for uh, your shot. So if you're stupid and you shoot the animal in like the back leg or something like that, the game, you get a low score on that hunt um, because you've wounded it and now it's going to run for two miles and suffer and whatnot. Um, so you actually get rewarded for choosing the right gun, the right ammo, hitting the animal in the right spot. But that really... It's weird because as I say that, I'm describing it as like a very good hunting sim, but I that's not really what I love about it. It's just the world. I like being in the world. Um, it's kind of cool when you master the mechanics and have like a great hunt and you get like, you do everything right, but it's not because you're killing an animal. Like, I don't want it to come off as like, that's the, the appeal, you know, for me. Like, I'm sure there's hunters out there that absolutely love it because they're, you know, hunting animals and that's what they, they, they enjoy. But for me, it's more... Just uh, mastering mechanics and being in the world. Wow. So this is some good press for what is, uh, I think, most likely a pretty niche product. Um, like I said, I haven't even heard of it. And uh, yeah, this is this is some good podcast press. So if you are behind the hunter, Call of the Wild, get in touch with Push to Talk. Bill's got some very nice things to say. Wow. Very nice. Very yeah. good game. Um, you also mentioned Super Mario Maker 2, which I have also been playing. And um, I've been playing it in the same way, actually. Uh, not so much on the creator front, uh, but have been digging into the Nintendo, uh, the, you know, the Nintendo made levels, which I have found to be mostly pretty impressive. Uh, I haven't played it, you know, for a crazy long time or anything to really dig in. I'm sure the creativity will get jacked up the longer I, the longer I'm in there. But, um, my early impressions are some of those levels are really cool. It's, it's really neat to see, I, I guess also from just like as I'm playing a level that's good, I'm thinking like, wow, you can make this level in this game? That's crazy. That's awesome. So yeah. I've had a lot of those moments already, which is a good sign, I think, uh, as I'm diving in here. I told my wife about the game and she said, eh, you know, whatever. So I didn't believe her because she's never impressed when I tell her about a game. Okay. So uh, I had her sit next to me while I played a level and then handed the switch over to her that she's gone. That's it. That's all it took. Wow. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> so it's kind of neat to see that happen. Nice. Were you a uh, Mary Maker 1 player? No, no, I was not. Um, that was Wii U, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Never owned a Wii U. Gotcha. What about you, Laren? Oh, no, I didn't have a Wii U. Mm. And still no Switch. That's what the GoFundMe's for. Still Christ. no Switch. Yeah, that's what we got. <laughs> uh, you yeah. give me a Switch covered in plants, I'd be good to go. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh... With a copy of Breath of the Wild. Okay. Well, we have like a pretty precise custom order here if anybody wants to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, we'll link the Amazon wish list, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Uh, that's about all I've been playing. As uh, my time has been very, uh, I don't know. I'm just uh, painting and. Are you? Yeah. All that. Are you in full house mode now? Full house mode. Yeah, lots lots to do. And uh, every time you think you're done, you're not done. So. No. Did I ever tell you the fifty dollars thing? No matter which direction you look when you first buy a house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it, was I right or was I wrong? It's hard to say because nothing's busting yet. I mean, I haven't had like, you know, explosions or, you know, anything You haven't crumble. been like, oh, we got to buy new garbage cans. No, oh, we need a new hose. No, not oh, yet, okay. not yet, not yet. But I, I'm, I'm sure that will happen. But okay, uh, mostly just like, oh, I forgot a thing at Lowe's. And then, yeah, that's another 80 bucks. One trip. You know, I need one item, but then I went, I come home with like 20. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, th yeah, so that's eating into my uh, Mario Maker time and my gaming time in general which is fine i uh getting some exercise out of it so it's not all bad well and it, if now that you own a home you have made the realization that i have which is everything that you do to that house it it means something it's not for nothing you know so it's like an investment so you know you, you go buy something and fix a light you know that's your light that's now fixed and like i always look at it like oh my property value is going up as i make improvements and you know like 
when you're in an apartment or you're renting or something like that, everything you do is just for nothing, right? Not a benefit to you in the long run. It's just a benefit to whoever owns it. So um, hopefully you find that 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 part because I enjoy that a lot. I enjoy that, yeah. And not to knock renting because I was thinking about this too, like, you know, to to silo the idea of renting into something that's purely a, a bad idea. I I think that's incorrect. And I and I thought that way for a long time and I rented for a long time. Now looking at it, it is sort of a you get what you pay for situation where, uh, you know, it is less of a burden to take on a rental. And yeah, you get less pride with that, right? Like it is just kind of like, a, it's a pretty even ratio of like the added additional cost of owning a home versus the added value and the added pride you have in that home. So, um, True. you know, I, I don't want to say like renting is, is a terrible idea. Cause I know that I've thought that in the past, but now looking back, it's like, no, if that's, if you're renting and like, you're able to save while you're renting, you're able to not like go broke while you're renting, you know, more power to you. Yeah. True. I think for me, it's more, I look at it like in 20 years, I'm going to own this thing. Right. Sure. And the, per, like the actual cost of, well, I'm sure I'll find another way to spend a stupid amount of money monthly, but yeah. You know, <laughs> um, and that's the kind of the goal is like, I feel like now every time I make that payment, it's not for nothing. Whereas maybe even incorrectly, but when I was renting, I was like, oh, that money's gone. Never getting that back. Sure. You know? Yep. 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 Yeah. Welcome to, to our podcast on home ownership and rentals. Yes. It is a uh, push to pave. Pa- push to pave. Pa- paint to talk. <laughs> paint to talk. I don't know, man. Design it. We'll build it. If we build it, they will listen. I don't know. <laughs> I wish that second part was true. <laughs> Yeah, true. So let's let's get into some stories here. Um, all right, you guys are both PC heads, so I'm gonna let you steer the ship here. But Steam Summer Sale is upon us. I know Bill is feeling underwhelmed. Um, I have been a part of the mania in the past, uh, and I I have a, a decent idea as to why Bill might be feeling underwhelmed. But you know. Tell us a little bit why you feel this way. Well, um, I remember a few years ago, and it could be three or four. Um, I don't remember what gimmick they had, because there's usually a gimmick with the sale, right? Like this year's like race cars or something. Or wait, not cars, like animals. You're racing dogs and rabbits and whatnot. It's like so, a Grand Prix or something. Yeah, like buy games and then spend money and, you know, fuel up your BS and then go earn a trophy and then your BS moves along the line. Okay. It's BS and it's all BS. So they have a gimmick this year. Um, but I remember a couple years ago when the steam summer sale hit, I was engaged every day. Like I couldn't wait to wait. Like I'd wake up and I'd be like, Oh, what's on sale. And there were flash sales that changed every four hours. And there were like daily sales and whatever. And, um, there were people who were making charts about how to buy and when to buy and when not to buy and things like that. And I just, I was totally invested and I probably spent in the neighborhood of like three or $400 that year. I just went ham. So I'm not sure if I just bought all the crap that I want to play because a lot of this stuff is like $5 game, $10 game, stuff like that. Like I'm not out there buying like $50 games most of the time. I'm buying like those obscure titles that, you know, were $20 and now they're five kind of thing. So I don't know if I just burned myself out that year or if the sale just sucks. But this year I forget that it's on. Like in a day I'll wake up and be like, meh, whatever. Wow. What about you, Larry? You Is this like a holiday for you or you, you also don't care? Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like it's a lot more underwhelming. Uh, it, it's been like that for a couple years now, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think I really enjoyed the flash sales and I don't know when they got rid of those, but, uh, it was always fun to see something go like super, super discounted and try to like grab it right away. Cause it's that feeling of, Oh, I'm going to get this bargain only once I have to do it right now. Um, but all of this stuff that's on sale, I think maybe it is partially what you were saying, Bill, about, uh, maybe I already have all the stuff that I want to play. Um, or, I just know I'm not going to get to my backlog anytime soon anyway. So buying it is just going to be like, it's going to sit there forever in my library. Um, Yeah, but for whatever reason, I think it's just not as exciting. And then having these like weird little themes of like, oh, play a mini game while you're trying to spend money on more games. It's uh, it's more confusing than anything. And so (laughs) I uh, think I don't think it's really helping. I don't know what the gimmick was the year that I was really into it. Um, but I know they've done badges in the past where if you spend money, you earn mm-hmm. points or something. I don't know. And I mean, really, that's never been a part of it. But it's just weird. It's gone from like me waking up and just being like, man, summer sale. What's on sale? And it was it's not just me. Everyone that I game with. Right. Like Jan, um, you know, Dusty, even like Laren, like we like 
the people that I know who are PC gamers, nobody's falling over themselves about the Steam sale anymore. Like, they've just lost something. They've lost a hook there. And I don't know if it's a matter of, like you said, like, you know, we both said that the games, we already own them, but more games come out. So are we just buying games as they come out? Like, I don't know what's missing from the Steam sale. Um, I do feel like this year's gimmick is kind of awkward, Mm -hmm. right? That Grand Prix thing. Like, I just, I looked at it and I'm like, what? I'm putting fuel in a rabbit? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's not clear. And then apparently Steam tried to fix it so that it wasn't so confusing about like two days into the sale. But it's just as bad, you know. It's Everybody How picked about... Team Corgi and then they just took off running with the lead. Yeah, I saw that. I forget what I picked, but it wasn't Corgi. I might have picked rabbits because I have rabbits in my backyard. That seems like something I would do. Um, So I guess it was Hare I'm, is the one that I chose. I, so. I chose Tortoise because, you know, slow and steady and all that. I think my question, not just for Steam, but basically every game studio and every every company that handles games, is there nobody that just calls stupid stupid in these places? Like when this was rolled out, did nobody go, this is dumb. Don't do this. This is stupid. Like I feel like, like if the Grand I Prix designed, idea. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if, if I pitch that to you and Yan and Laren, you'd be like, what? No, this is they, no one's going to understand what this is. Stupid. Don't do this. <laughs> Let's just talk about craft beer or something. Don't do this. This is dumb, <laughs> right? Apparently, that's not happening. I don't know why. Maybe people are afraid to tell the boss, this is dumb. I, that could be a possibility. But I see it all over games. Like, I see it, of course, in Destiny, and you just see decisions made, and then you're just looking at it like, what are you doing? Like, is no? do you have no personnel in your office that says, stop, this is bad. Don't do this. Apparently not. Apparently because not. Because I yeah. just keep, yeah. Like, I don't understand how this game or whatever that Steam has going on got out the door. But, like, we are literally writing guides about how to play it. It's not even the focus of the sale. Yeah, I think this is the the last bit of evidence that's needed to sort of manifest a permanent uh, segment on the show. Because if anyone's listened the past, like, three months, the common thread for Bill is that he hates dumb ideas coming out of well-established companies studios developers etc so i think i think bill i think you need to do some homework each week and decide on the one thing you want to bring up each week where there was a dumb idea that came out of a place yeah i can do it daily but yeah weekly will work i'll just (laughs) i'll have to spend an hour prepping to be like okay let's whittle it down to the really stupid one you know um you need a catchy name for this segment as well by the way you call it rumpo's rant there you go well but it's not specific Um, it's not specific to this mm. though Come on, this is uh, this is me telling you that that's not good enough. This is exactly what you wanted. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because not every even geniuses don't have genius ideas every time. Sure. Like I can I can look at Destiny and be like, man, that game is amazing. It's brilliant. There's so many brilliant pieces to it. And then I there was part of this as I was speaking about the Iron Banner. There was part of this quest that required you to get 33 or more, somewhere around 33 grenade kills in the Crucible. If you've ever played it, you get one every 10 games. And then the final step of the quest after you've played 30 games is to just play more games. And I'm like, what is happening? Who is not speaking up here? (laughs) Like I, I listened to Luke Smith talk on stream and he sounds like an intelligent guy. And I, I literally want to sit down and be like, I want to know where this idea passed. I want to know every point that this idea passed through. Who was the final person that said, this is good. Let's put this out the door. Slap them. Why are you doing this? Don't do this. Throw stupid right out the window. Anyways. So... I'm angry. I'm angry. (laughs) Rumpo rage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. But with the Valve thing, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, you know what? You know what makes sales good? Good deals. Yes. Not games. Yeah. So that was going to be my next question. You guys have been paying attention more so than I have. So I need, I need your anecdotal reference point. Are the numbers worse? Is the percent off the hot game worse now? Why is it different? I mean, I like when things are like really, really discounted. Because that's what'll get my attention. But if it's like, oh, 10% off, then forget it. You know? Well, sure. I can get I that mean, like any time of the year, right? Um, so I'm I'm looking for things that are more than 50% off, and there's just not a whole lot of stuff in that category that I want to play also on top of that. Mm, yeah. You know what could fix a sale is uh, Joe could fix the sale. What does that mean? I actually, I think that a lot of their problems come with design and presentation. Because Laren mentioned the flash sales. That was not, I'm sh- they may have flash sales in there now, but it's not obvious. Mm-hmm. They haven't done a good job of presenting their content. You know what I mean? And that's kind of your bag, right? That's my bag. Sure. UI, UX. 
Right. I think if you were to look at the sale and just say like, as, like, and you should, you should log into Steam and just take a peek and be mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm looking at the featured and there's three featured games and then I go down and there's more featured games and then like there's aspects of it that are okay. But I think the flash sale had a way of kind of like putting a slight bit of buyer's panic in you. Like I better right. hit it or it's yes. gone. Like I had to buy it because it was gone. Or you're going like, to have FOMO. Tomorrow. Right. I don't want to buy it. Maybe I don't want to play it, but I definitely don't want to play it for $20. So I'm going to buy it at $5. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me, like, I have to scroll all the way to the very bottom of the front page to find under $10 and under $5 games, huh. which is the thing that I want to find. And if I would it's be five willing bucks, to bet I want to look at it. But they make more money on those games than yeah. they do on the big one. More but people like, are going to buy that $5 game than are going to buy the $50 game. Yeah. I'm not going to get Securo for 20% off. I'm going to go look for all the. $10, $5 games, whatever, the cheapest ones you can find and see what I can grab. And I'm more likely to spend more just on multiple really cheap games. Oh, look, when I scroll I down, because I'm on the page now, we're doing some yeah. live research. Nice. Um, under 12, under Canadian, well, this is Canadian version, right? So under $12, Surviving Mars. If that was at the top, I might buy that. But I had to really dig to find that. Tabletop simulators, $11. Um, there's just too much, I don't know, their presentation's not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there is something to be said, you know, and I'm, this isn't me saying I could fix it so much as I'm saying you're, you're probably right about the design. There's something to be said. You may have noticed if either of you watch Netflix that like if a show changes their their tile image, you're more likely yes. to look at it that second time. It's like, oh, what is this? And it's that same show you skipped a thousand times. But, you know, like if it's uh, Surviving Mars, and I, and I think I've seen that game before where it's like just like a clay colored uh, comic book style art with the logo right something like that right yeah so if they just had the developer you know they say this is steam saying to the developer of surviving mars we want to feature your game we noticed that you put down for a pretty sizable discount it's awesome that you did that send us a you know uh 1024 by 1024 feature image that looks really hot and we're going to put you at high on the page that makes so much difference that that's everything It'll triple. Yeah, it'll triple their sales. It will. And I know it will because that Netflix reference was perfect because I do that. I'm like, what is that? Oh, well, maybe now I like this movie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. The movie didn't change, but it definitely caught my attention. It definitely stopped and gave me pause and made me think about it. Yep. They do that with um, they used to. They don't they don't have 30 Rock anymore. My favorite show of all time. But when Netflix had 30 Rock, they would change the tile like really frequently. And like it would be just uh you know jack donaghy and then it would just be liz lemon and then it would just be tracy morgan and then it would just be kenneth or something and it was like oh yeah this is my favorite show i'm gonna watch it again like every time they did that uh it's it's really powerful just that kind of that like easy refresh is really powerful i think so our summary here is that steam has multiple problems one of them a little more subtle perhaps and one of them like what is this game (laughs) <laughs> why did you do this sure so um but yeah i think i think it's probably like multiple things like it's not one thing it's the issues are generally a little more complex than that i haven't had a like what's the term like current like like competing pc one that was like good enough to run new stuff i haven't had that for about 10 years and when i when i was getting into steam sales 10 years ago um I remember less participants in the sale, but the ones that did participate, they were well discounted. So to Laren's point, like 20% off Sekiro, it's more like, well, how about you just, you're not part of this. That's okay. You don't have to be because you came out in March. It's all good. You know, we'll, we'll see you for the Christmas sale or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. No, that makes sense. And it, here's the thing. Steam might be making, like Valve might be making more money, right? They could legitimately be their sale. Like, I don't know the numbers. I'm just speaking for my own personal experience, which they are probably looking at the bigger grand scheme of things and saying, well, yeah, maybe this hardcore user is not as happy and doesn't buy as much, but we pulled in so many more casuals with this approach, right? Um, That could be very possible. I don't know. Maybe they're making more money than they've ever made. And who cares what I think? Uh, Based on the 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 size of the uh, Steam team, which I think came out recently, it's like a handful of people. They're probably like, hanging on by the skin of their teeth. I don't think there's a whole lot of strategy behind this. That's my impression anyway. Okay. Well, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm right then. I don't know. Who knows? I just know that it, like I, as a person, as a user, I look at it and I'm like, this sucks. Sure. So. Well, that, 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 you know, we can speculate all we want about how we got here, but if the consumer says this sucks, that's, you know, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, I had a little tale for both of you and uh, this, the steam story reminded me of it. 
Uh, I know that I'm the only Xbox boy here, but I play Xbox. Oh, perfect. Like, <laughs> Xbox gal. Yeah. You, you two talk. I'm going to cough. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so Laren, you might be familiar that uh, during E3, I believe at the, pre- at the Xbox press conference, they announced officially the Xbox game pass ultimate, if that's the right term, uh, the 15 bucks a month thing. Uh, that gives you Game Pass and uh, live, live at the same time. Yeah, and they're really promoing it pretty hard. You may have noticed um, where you can upgrade your Gold subscription, meaning like you're just the same old Xbox Live Gold that's been out since 2003. You can upgrade that to Game Pass Ultimate, meaning Gold and Game Pass for a dollar. Now I don't know if you've looked at this. Have you looked at this? I have not. Okay, no. this is this is uh, a version of what you. We're describing as that panicked, I want to be a part of this thing. And I'll, I'll explain why. Mm. So what they've done here, and they've done it either mistakenly or it's so brilliantly that it is just this ridiculous, ridiculous deal. Like this is, this, is the, this is the game's deal of 2019, period. Here's what's happening. So you can stack your Xbox Live Gold up to three years, meaning on your account, you can have up to three years paid and accounted for, right? What they let you do for one American dollar is convert whatever time is remaining on your account of gold to Game Pass Ultimate. So if you, on on the day of the Xbox E3 press conference, had three years on your account for one dollar, you could convert that three years of gold to three years of Game Pass Ultimate. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. So I would assume that your reaction is that sounds wrong because that's in... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm trying right. to process it. <laughs> so it does sound wrong. So if you had paid ahead of time, you're saying for for gold. If you had, if you have gold, like on if your you account, had paid in advance, yes. yeah, yes, then that would be converted into Game Pass years. Game Pass years, exactly. Well, however many ye- huh. years or months of gold you have, you could for one dollar oh, convert it to Game Pass and gold. Sounds yeah. like a deal. It's an incredible yeah. deal, and I think, and there's been stories all over about like how to do this cuz cuz if you want to do this Lauren you can go do it tonight they they've kept it up because i think i think it's like been really good press for them so if you only have a month of gold left all you have to do is go on amazon and buy a gold uh up to up to 3 years of xbox live gold like just like you always have and then pay an extra dollar and convert it all and so huh. the reason i think this is either a mistake right cuz this seems just like a really easy way to lose money for them or brilliant is because we're all talking about getting the new consoles next year, right? Xbox has said holiday 2020. PS5 is probably slated for holiday 2020. I don't think they have officially said that or anything, but it's likely that it's going to happen in the same window, right? When these yeah. two new consoles come out and you are, are now able to start fresh and pick one of them, you can only afford one of them. You know, some of us get both because we're insane. But if you can only get one, which one are you going to get? The one that has a massive games library at your fingertips because you have this back catalog of years and years of free Game Pass. Or the other one where there's going to be like one new Knack 3 game that comes out. (laughs) Oh, man. You mean you're not sold on Knack 3? (sighs) I don't know that I'm sold on it, but I'm also (sighs) not necessarily giving up on it. I have... Okay, so I think the average reasonable thinking person is going with Xbox in in your scenario. Sure, sure, sure. Mm, Yes. Um... And also to mention, because uh, uh, Asif uh, mentioned that Sony not going to E3 was weak sauce. I, I do agree. That is, it, they haven't said anything since then, right? I don't think they have, have they? I don't think so. I, I don't I think mean, so. I could have missed it. They that. might have announced a state of play. I don't know. I feel like we would know if they did. Or they announced they weren't going to San Diego Comic-Con. So anyways, um, <laughs> their, ti- their time is running out to say something and do something. And yeah, mm-hmm. like they're, it's getting ugly. Um, but I think the reasonable person would go with the Xbox in that situation. And as dumb as this is, I think you'll still see that maybe Xbox crushes Sony out of the gate, but I still think there will be a lot of people that, you know, they don't get a PlayStation five right away because of the reasons you said, but then six months later, you know, they're going to release a PlayStation five exclusive that a bunch of people have to have, and they're going to buy a PS five to play it. Oh, sure. And then six months. So I think that in the long run, Sony's going to rely on that business model. I'm not a business analyst. I don't know how wise or stupid that is. It's probably not smart, but um, I think that, yeah, I think you're right. I think that initially. Yeah, I mean, listen, like I'm I'm all about the next 
Last of Us, whatever's coming next. I'm I'm super into it for sure. I'm saying if you're Xbox or if you're Microsoft Games Division and you're trying to find a way to not have what happened seven years ago happen again, and if this is on purpose, and I'm and I'm not saying it certainly is it, but it, this can't be this can't be an accident, right? Like it's been like, like no. they kept the sale going, right? It has to be on purpose. Because it's kind of this, it's like, an accident. it's kind of this like underground. It it required like a guide to figure out how to do it. I had to like read about like, is this like what's going to happen when I get to this screen, and then it's going to confirm that it's going to convert everything. Like it was a little like almost like uh, on purpose obtuse. Um, yeah. yeah, and that kind of made it cool, if that makes any sense. So I, I think it's like a clever way to if you're Xbox, right? I'm not saying like it's going to crush Sony or anything. I'm not saying that, but I mean it could in any way. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But point being, like, it's a clever way to maybe tip the, you know, tip someone over if they're fifty-fifty. That's all. And no, a, I agree. It's a way to to ensure that a lot of Xbox players or users stick with the Xbox when the next gen stuff comes around. Right. Uh, and because the way I look at it is, I'm paying for gold anyway, so might as well add on a better deal with the gold that I already pay for. Exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah. There's no question, because um, I think a lot of people. And the, I mean, I'm not a Sony fanboy. I'm just as happy to say that they're dumb like I am anybody um, as that they're smart. I do tend to lean more towards buying PlayStations, uh, partly because I'm really into the exclusives. Not to say that I don't think that they're making a bunch of stupid mistakes right now. But, you know, same as you, like I'm all down on the next big exclusive. But if I'm looking at it objectively, it's really, really hard to not acknowledge the smart moves that Microsoft has been making with Xbox. Like it's just... There's just value there, um, and it's good value, and it's good press. <clears throat> the thing that I think is, I used to work for, I used to do loss prevention for a company, and this is related in a way. Um, and what I would do is I would, you know, work undercover and detect shoplifters and then arrest them. Here's the thing. In my mind, stopping someone from stealing that one bottle of booze was, that was my goal, right? That was it. That was me. From the company standpoint, though, if in the process of stopping someone from stealing that bottle of booze, we got into a scuffle and I bumped into an old lady and knocked her over, right? That's going to be a news story, which is bad press. They're going to go to court and get sued, which is bad. And I realized very quickly that that company was willing to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of dollars in product walking out the door just to avoid bad press. That the money is not the most important thing in the short term. It's the press. So when you were talking about like, you know, how this couldn't be on purpose, it could because look at how the good press they're getting. Look at the good will that they're they're getting. That is far more valuable to them in the short term because it will mean money in the long term. So I I think that this very well could be you know intentional. No, no, I'm I'm almost certain that it is. I just I think it's possible that it didn't start that way. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, maybe they stumbled upon it, but right. Yeah, I think I think press definitely. Uh, you know, good press can definitely outweigh the dollar at least in, in certain isolated incidents. Well, the idea being that the good press leads to cash down the line, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, right. exactly. Otherwise, I mean, at the end of the day, cash is, you know, cash is going to the ultimate, but um, this is going to lead to it. Like, I mean, I kind of want to buy an Xbox, whatever number we're going to attach to it eventually, you know? Sure, um, sure. And I, it'll sit there and collect dust, but I'll still be like, wow, they did really good stuff and that's really cool. I'm going to buy one of those. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, it, I, I, it's, it's hard to... to I think they say the moves they've made in the past few months. It's cool to see, but sticking on the on the Steam side of things, um, yeah, they're not knocking it out of the park with the summer sale. Some questionable promotion of the summer sale, and uh, that brings us to our next story, which is that uh, Tim Sweeney of Epic Games has sort of spoke up about uh, some of the more controver- controversial aspects of the uh, exclusives that have uh, landed on the Epic Epic Game Store, um, and how that relates to Steam. I know, Bill, this was uh, of interest to you if you want to dig in a little bit for us. Uh, Tim Sweeney essentially said that like he defended Valve's, and this was in a series of tweets, I think. Um, he defended Valve's, not Valve, sorry, Epic Games, um, securing exclusives because, in his opinion, that is how you force or pressure Valve into giving studios a better cut than 70 30 so as as it is right now and i don't know if the numbers have changed in the last week or whatever but um it appears that valve still takes 30 percent, right and the creator of the the title or the studio the publisher whatever it is takes 70 percent, and uh that was viewed as not being a very good cut 
Um, and Epic Games, I don't know the number, but they apparently do not take that big of a cut. They take a smaller cut. I don't know what it is, but they take a smaller cut. So he's essentially saying like, hey, we're, we're, we're getting these exclusives and we're securing them because that is the only way that we can force Valve into being better and taking a smaller cut, which in the end of the you know discussion is better for the gamers, it's better for the studio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I agree that it might actually result in pressure on Valve, but mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day, I'm not entirely sure that his motivation is to be the hero. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, yeah, it's unlikely, right? I mean... It's it's more it's more about deflecting from the idea that of course they want exclusive. That's that's good. That's good for business. That's good for Epic. <laughs> right. Like, oh, well, we're doing this thing and it's really good for the industry and maybe it is, but let's be honest here. Like, it's good for Epic Games too, you know? When if you want to play, if you're a PC gamer right now, undoubtedly you've had to install the Epic Games Store. They have enough exclusives. They don't have I don't know what the cut is, how many they have compared to Valve or don't or whatever, how many games are on the Epic Games Store versus Steam. I have no idea. But they're getting enough big games in the last six months that and have enough big games coming up that are exclusive that you pretty much have to install it if you're a PC gamer. So that's a win for them. And the more exclusives they get, the more people that you're eventually going to have to install it and the more people that are going to browse through their store and spend money. Um, so, uh, yeah, like it's good for... It's good for the industry that Steam, you know, takes a smaller cut, I I think. But at the end of the day, I'm not convinced whatsoever that Tim Sweeney and Epic Games did it for the good of the industry so much as for the business. The real tell is that when Valve inevitably buckles and, you know, wants to sort of meet in the middle somewhere and says, okay, now it's 25 or now it's 22.5 or something like that. Epic doesn't need to then relinquish this uh, hunt for... Uh, exclusives they don't need to but if they don't it makes tim sweeney look like a dick so then the narrative is going to be well we're not going to stop chasing exclusives until you're down to 10 <laughs> yeah okay well you know what i mean it just needs to be whatever number uh epic gives the developer yeah but i wonder has anybody put a number on it has like has because this would be this would be epic's downfall of looking out for their own interest if they were to say uh you know, if they were to put a number on it and then Steam meets that number, now they have to stop chasing exclusives or they look bad. Exactly. Right. right exactly. Um, but I'm willing to bet, like, have they put a number on it? Because if they haven't put a number on it, then at the end of the day, well, no, they could just move the bar wherever they want to move the bar until they, you know, and there may not be a real bar. It may just be a PR stunt. Like, well, we're doing this for the good of gamers. We're doing this for the good of the industry. Well, this is an article waiting to happen. You journalists. I think there's a thousand articles on this already. I don't no, know. there needs to be like well, an interview we just... I'm saying with Tim, Mr. Tim. Yeah, yeah. And say, what's that number? Give us a, give Valve a metric, sir, and then we'll start the race. And then, and then, as I mentioned several podcasts ago, didn't I say something about how I was kind of concerned about how much power um, Epic Games was going to have? You know, I think I said something like that. I, I said did. it to somebody. I Maybe I was drunk and said it to a friend. But um, <laughs> the microphone drunk. Yeah, but now if that happens they've become the police, right? Sure. They're dictating what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Steam needs to give us, needs to give studios this cut or we're going to hold, you know, exclusives and hold pieces of the of the PC gaming um, world hostage, essentially. Like, you know, we're going to keep bringing exclusives over here and et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know. Like, it's probably not as big a deal as I'm making it out to be, but I'm just saying, like, they are certainly inching more into a power position, you know? So Sure. Or the, the, I think the flip side is that you could say this is just a natural like monopoly bust and that, and that this sort of like tension just comes with uh, attacking a company that's only had to compete with itself for like yeah. 10 years, really 10 plus years. And that is a good thing. Yeah. Like it is a good sure. thing, but are we just going to end up at a different monopoly, right? Like are we, tr- is, is Epic Games trying to bust the monopoly for the good of everybody or are they just trying to be the monopoly? I feel like the ones who benefit the most in this situation are the developers because they're able to get a better cut for the work that they put in. Um, And whether it's exclusive on a free client or not shouldn't really matter as long as the developers themselves are happy and they're able to work on their game some more or make another game. I think we all benefit from that. Um, Price-wise, it would all be the same, I think, whether it's on the Epic Store or Steam. Like, a AAA game is going to be $60 regardless. So... I don't know that it's yeah. really like benefiting us one way or the other as gamers, but um, the developers are benefiting for sure by choosing to go to the Epic Store. And I think that's ultimately 
a good thing. Um, and I'm of the opinion that competition in capitalist stuff is also good. So I think it's good that they're trying to push Steam in a different direction that benefits the game developers, even if it is, you know, for their own interests. Of course, it's for their own interests. They're a business too, Epic. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's probably better in terms of like the developer's well-being. Yeah, definitely. And I don't knock, again, like I, Tim Sweeney has to look out for Epic, right? And that's fine. Right. I have no issue with that. Um, I'm, and it's not like, I'm not knocking it. Like if I was working for Epic Games and I would say the same thing, right? Like, I'm not going to be like, well, we're doing it for selfish reasons. You know, you're going to say what, uh, you're going to make yourself look good in, in, in right. press. That's the yeah. way it works. And that's any business. They're going to do what totally. makes, is the best for them. Right. I just find it interesting. I just, I just like looking at people when they say things and being like, really? Huh? That's all right. Okay. I don't believe you, but for whatever, you know, like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, um, you know, uh, I don't like Epic is nowhere near having a monopoly on the PC gaming scene at all. Right. Um, and they are, you're right. They are breaking steam's hold on it a little bit. Um, and it is good for developers and whatnot. So I think, you know, obviously it's, it is a good thing, but, um, I just wanted to give, I just wanted to tilt my head a little bit and squint and give Tim Sweeney a look and be like, really? I don't know, <laughs> sir. I don't think you're quite Batman yet. But, all right. <laughs> yeah. He, he does wear the mask, but that's about it. He's, are you the hero we need? How does that go? I don't know. Anyway. You're not the hero we need, just the one we deserve. Maybe that, maybe that's applicable here. I don't know. But either way, all good. Um, and then in swoops, GOG with their DRM free <laughs> pressures on everybody else. Right. Yeah. Which is, I guess, probably like a, not big into superheroes, but I'm picturing more of like a loosey goosey Spider Man type, like a, yeah. like a more like fun loving type. <laughs> a, a Polish Spider Man, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe we just turned. Well, then, okay. Just to take it a step further, what is origin? What superhero or anti hero for that matter? Thanos? Thanos. I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't follow to be able to talk about Thanos. I don't know. Explain Thanos to me. I literally don't know. I same. I I saw uh, Iron Man two. <laughs> that's it. Was you Thanos in Iron Man two? No, no. I'm just saying that's that's my basically my only real. Yeah, Marvel no. Knowledge. I to answer Laren's question, I have zero interest in the Avengers or most of anything Marvel related whatsoever. I couldn't tell you what's happening or who's who or yeah, no. Oh. Yeah, same here. Un unfortunately, for this podcast, because I think we uh, just hit a road road bump. Wow. No, we'll, we'll say we'll have to talk about it for in a next podcast. Like, we'll origin could be <laughs> origin could be like I don't know, uh, Doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay, that one will work. <laughs> that sounds bad, but yeah, sure. We're just picking any villain and throwing it on there. It, it really. I was trying to think of it. someone a little more gluttonous, like a penguin type, just like a little more <laughs> like self indulgent, but. Here's a here's a quick job. Here's a hut? quick question. There you go, job of the hut. Just for image though, right? Yeah, but also but not for character uh, traits. Yeah. Also the the hedon hedonism of it all. If you had to rate, we can do this as quickly because I I, I suspect we're getting close. I don't know. I have a yeah, we're getting timeline, there. but we're getting there. So we'll be quick. But if you had to rate the portals, right, the platforms, so Steam and uh, Epic and uh, Origin and GOG and Uplay and all those. What what order would you put them in from best to worst? I'll let Laren go first. Oh no, I gotta think about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, so I'll go. I'll go. GOG is first for me. The the uh, DRM stuff, but also the like um, older, more nostalgic aspect of what they do appeals to me a little bit more. And then I'd probably go Steam just for the familiarity. And then the other stuff I'm not as familiar with. Origin's probably the worst one. Is my guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I I would put GOG at the top or GOG. Um, also because it's CD Projekt, <laughs> so I'm just like CD Projekt fan. They can do here. no wrong. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and if you buy Cyberpunk through GOG, all the proceeds go directly to the developers. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Just throwing that out there. Um, so probably that would be at the top for me, and then I guess, mm, yeah, I guess Steam might be second, just because you know I've had it for so long and. A lot of the games are on there and just accessibility wise it's the easiest one to jump onto i think um epic would probably be third for me uh because i i like i like all this conversation about like putting pressure on steam and all that so i'll put them third just for doing that and origin just annoys the crap out of me so i'll just put that somewhere at the bottom 
I see. amidst all the other ones. Is Blizz no, not Blizz. Battle.net on there on this list. Yeah, I would I mean anything you want yeah. on there is on there. I don't know, I'm not super familiar with it. I don't know. Just throw the so, rest at the bottom of the pile somewhere. <clears throat> Shuffle them around. I would have chosen Steam first, but it's not a healthy relationship. Like I'm not proud of it. Like it's just it's the familiarity thing, but you know, that's it. Because I don't really care about GOG. You know, I appreciate why you two do, but um, and I've bought things on there before, and I have an account somewhere that I'd have to dig up and whatnot. And I think that's probably where I bought most of my Witcher PC stuff. Um, so for me, it's Steam. Then it's Epic Game Store uh, because I think it's pretty, and they give me free games every week. So I'm gonna give them a give them a nod. Oh yeah, and there's a free game. bunch. Yeah, every week, and, and I go good. get them every they're week. They're good, like indie games usually, but they're they're good. They ones. are, but I never play them. I just get them. <laughs> Um, so my library is growing with free stuff that I'll never touch. Uh, but they have a bunch of games coming to the Epic Game Store, like PS4 that were PS4 exclusives. Um, and it's mostly, uh, is it Quantic? Oh, Quantic Quantum. Dream? Yeah, Quantic Dream. So yeah. we're getting uh, Detroit Become Human, mm. uh, Heavy Rain, right. and Beyond Two Souls. So those, obviously, like that's really cool. Those are games that if I, I would love nothing more than if the PS4, or PS5, or Sony. All their exclusives would come to PC because I wouldn't own a PlayStation anymore, right? Same. I would rather be playing it on PC, but I can't. So that's if I could play God of War on PC, I totally would. Absolutely. So I would say Steam, Epic Games. Then oddly, I'm going with uh, I think I'm going with Origin because I have their um, their super duper subscription thing. I don't know what it's called, okay. but I have that. Right. The and EA access, they, or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah access. damn. There's like a lot of games that fit into what I play, like especially some of the sports titles and the Sims and whatnot, and some of the packages they have and the Battlefield games. And there's a lot of value in there for me specifically. So it, you know, Origin for that reason does well. Um, I guess we gotta even include Microsoft, right? Like we have like to, Microsoft like, uh, Game Store on on yeah, the PC no. side. Yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with it yeah. myself. Is it good? Well, whatever you bought. For your Xbox, I bought that for PC. Okay, sure. Right? So, yeah, it's good. Um, I don't think it's quite in the same... Like maybe it, it, their store layout is pretty bad, and I don't really know what I bought. Um, but it seems like I bought something good, and I, I imagine it'll get better over time. Like, I think Gears 5 is, you know, included in the purchase, and there's other games that are coming that are included in the purchase. So, um, yeah, it's up there. Uh, and then I would go with uh, Uplay for Ubisoft, then maybe GOG, and then Battle.net. GOG below you play? Wow, that I is, just don't care about that's it. It's quite a burn. Yikes. I don't ever have a reason to go there. My internet works. I can play these games that they offer <laughs> without DRM free, whatever. Like it just <clears throat> I don't have a there's no hook there, you know? Tisk tisk, Bill. Yeah. Wow. This is uh Bill's final episode. Uh <laughs> as he gets booed <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah. Or is the tomatoes? Yeah. yeah. I basically I basically just said that, you know, the the volunteer worker didn't interest me at all. So. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, "What? You don't like charity?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know. Charity does nothing for me. I don't know." Yeah. Yeah. I prefer Big Mega Corp X. My name's Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I sit there and complain about the Mega Corps and then I rank them all as the <laughs> the highest. Yeah. So I'm I'm essentially just turned myself into the largest gaming hypocrite of all time. Probably not, but you know, I, uh, I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like what Epic Games is doing. And Tim Sweeney, he's fake and man, man, man. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, but man, I love this store. <laughs> it's <laughs> pretty. Know. It gives me free stuff. So pretty. It looks like Joe made it. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we tried. We almost made it a whole episode without Bill damning himself, but here we are. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's time to wrap things up. Is there anything else either of you want to uh, say, Bill? You want to redeem yourself? No, I've got lasagnas cooked. I want out of here, man. Let's go. Nice. Laren, you? Uh, I'm good. We're good. So everybody, uh, thanks for listening. Enjoy your week. It's the first day of the new uh, new Destiny cycle, as I understand it. So uh, yeah, happy, happy playing. Thanks for listening. Uh, of course, subscribe to Push to Talk on all of the various channels, including YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Apple Music, uh, rather Apple Podcasts, I should say. Uh, Google Play, etc. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in another week. So take care. Bye bye.